Forestry in old school RuneScape. It's a minigame style upgrade to the beloved woodcutting skill and it's gonna bring the entire world of Kilenor more alive. You can now start woodcutting with your friends and get bonus experience, rewards, boosts, outfits and so much more. And in this video I want to showcase everything you need to know about the Forestry minigame and how to take full advantage of these updates. This is a very beginner friendly guide just to help you understand Forestry a little bit better. Okay, let's get started. I have integrated this video into three segments. The first one is events that will happen during your woodcutting sessions. The second one is boost that you can get through forestry minigame to help you out with other skills. And the final segment is the rewards. First, before you start with anything, it is recommended to go to trainer village and talk to the freaky forester to get a quick overview in game and help you get started. Before we talk about anything else in this video, we need to discuss the most important item with this update, the forestry kit. This backpack helps you store all your necessary items, the rewards you get from the shop, the boost you're gonna gain and all your supplies. Not to mention the newest currency which is gonna be called the anima infused bark. Another important thing to note is that the trees in old school runescape have now been upgraded making them more afk and giving you more yield overall. You also gain invisible wood cutting boost depending on how many people cut the same tree, up to 10 people. So let's start with the events. Every time you start wood cutting in old school runescape there is a likely chance that an event will happen. Some events are more likely than others which we will talk about later on but consider it like a random event we already see in the game. The events are not instanced and everyone can access them so wherever there are trees there are gonna be events. Also keep in mind that the higher tree you cut the more likely chance there is for an event to happen. So cutting magic logs in Camelot can give you more events than cutting oak logs in Lumbridge. On average you can expect an event around every 10 minutes of wood cutting however they happen more often if you're with a group of people rather than playing alone. So let's talk about them. First event you're likely gonna see is the rising roots. Whenever someone is chopping a tree next to you, angry roots can appear trying to protect the tree you and your friends are cutting. You need to cut down those roots as fast as possible for some extra wood cutting experience and anima infused park. The second event you might see is the flowering tree event. For this event to spawn, one of the people nearby you needs a new item called bee on a stick. Once you have that item, there is a chance that flowers will appear next to the tree you're cutting and these bees are here to help you pollinate the plants. However, it's your job to pollinate the flowers by moving it between the two correct flowers and in return you get extra wood cutting experience and once again anima infused parks and even herb seeds. Next event is struggling sapling where you have to help the sapling next to the tree grow by feeding it the right amount of mulch. You can buy that mulch from forestry shop and if you do it just right, you get rewarded extra woodcutting experience and once again anima infused park. And the final event right now is the leprechaun. This little guy can be spawned by anyone nearby who has the new leprechaun charm item. And don't worry, we will discuss this item later in the video as well. Once someone in your group or you has successfully chopped down a tree while they have the leprechaun charm, there is a chance that a leprechaun spawns and helps you basically bank all your items. Everything you have in your inventory starting from new items that come with the minigame or existing logs, meaning you no longer have to bank your logs manually. These are currently the four events that will come with the update, but don't worry, JX is slowly planning to add even more events in the near future, like enchantments, like poachers, dryads, pheasants, ants, and so much more. Next up, let's talk about the boosts that are coming with the update. To understand them a little bit better, there are gonna be new items in the game called leaves. And these are gonna be dropped from all the trees in Gilenor, and they go straight into your new forestry backpack. As you can see, these leaves gives you a variety of boosts. Some boost your production skills, some boost your gathering skills, and some leaves boost the duration of those buffs. Another item that gives you boost are tree roots, but rather than giving you straight buffs, this gives you a more of a secondary buff option, like chance to not burn your food while cooking on a fire or increased chance for bird nests while wood cutting. Now, how do you obtain these boosts? The leaves and roots I just talked about don't work themselves as boosts. Instead, you actually have to turn them into campfires and teas to gain the boost. So let's go over these two options as well. First, let's talk about campfires. To make them, just add a leaf or a root to already existing fire. That fire then will start smoking, indicating that something has been added to it. The better log you have, the longer the duration of the campfire lasts. Now you have two options for these campfires, if you're standing next to it. Firstly, you can rest, which after a short period of standing 
standing next to the fire, you will gain all the benefits of the campfire boost. So let's say I added magic roots to my fire and after chilling a little bit, I now have increased chance to receive clues from all skilling activities. And the second option when standing next to a campfire is the tent option, where you interact with the campfire directly and it allows you to use your new leaves and roots to create bigger boost with the campfire. Keep in mind everyone around the campfire can use this boost and they themselves can add extra leaves and roots to increase the duration or the bonus of the boost. All of it is meant for sharing, but if you only wanted the boost for yourself, you can make a cup of these, which will give you the same boost but it's personalized to only you. For this to work, you also have to be standing next to a campfire and use the leaves and the roots you get from trees on your cup of water. And it creates a similar boost that you would normally get, but this time you can carry this cup of tea with you wherever you go. There is also a much easier way to make tea cups now which includes using one soft clay and in return you get 4 tea cups. And finally for boosts you can now also add logs to the already existing fire which is gonna be called bonfires and that will make your fire making training more afk but also give you a little bit less experience than just creating a line of 27 fires in a row by the way if you gotten this far make sure you subscribe to the channel it really does help out a lot and with that let's talk about the rewards like I stated before, to buy all the rewards, you're gonna need Anima Infused Park, so take this item, like the gold currency we have, but only for woodcutting. The first and most anticipated reward is the Two-Handed Axe. To obtain this, you need to buy the axe handle from the forestry store in Drainer Village and attach it to your already existing axe. This process is irreversible and both the axe handle and the 200 axes are gonna be tradable with other players. The effect of the axe is gonna be to give you extra experience but in return you will get less logs and it's estimated to give you around 10% more experience per hour. Next up we have an item called P on a stick which we already mentioned briefly beforehand. To make the item you need 50 hunter and and 35 wood cutting and you need to buy the powder pollen at the forestry shop in drainer village and combine that with a ball of wool and normal logs and the final obstacle to create the bee on a stick is that you need to be standing next to a beehive. Currently the only beehive we have is in Caterpie, but there are gonna be many more beehives in the near future, including the one you're gonna be able to put in your player owned house. Once you have the bee on a stick item, there is a chance for the flowering event to happen while wood cutting that we already talked about in the event section. Next item is the Leprechaun Charm. This item can be made with 70 crafting, 70 wood cutting and 35 farming. But first you need to buy a Glover Insignia at the forestry shop and then combine that with a cut emerald and a ball of wool to create 10 Leprechaun Charms. These charms will spawn the Leprechaun next to you who will bank all your wood cutting supplies. Next up we have the Nature's Offering and after consuming the item it gives you a chance for an additional log. So let's say you're cutting magic logs. There is on average about 70% chance to get another magic log while woodcutting if this item is active. You can create nature's offering with 50 farming, 68 woodcutting and you need to buy the ritual mulch at the forestry shop to combine that with one high tier herb like avantos, like worms, like carentine and so on. Next item we have is secateur's attachment and these items basically help you get more leaves when chopping trees and you can put them inside your forestry backpack to free up inventory space. You can make them by purchasing secateur's blade from the shop and using an iron bar to create 50 of them at a time. Okay, now let's talk about the rewards that you can purchase with only Anima Infused Park. With every reward I'm about to show you next, the logs you get from woodcutting are also gonna be one of the currency to buy these items. Let's start with a new reward called the Log Basket. This works exactly like the fishing barrel and it's very simple to understand. Once you open the Log Basket, you can store up to 28 logs of various types. If you keep it open, the logs will automatically go inside the Log Basket. It costs a total of 5000 Anima Infused Park and 25 Willow and 25 magic logs to buy. And right next to it is the log brace which is an upgraded version of the log basket. You can combine this with your forestry backpack and log basket to attach it to your backpack giving you an extra free inventory space and now you don't have to carry it with you. Next up we have the lumberjack outfit which means you don't have to do temple trekking anymore to get it and instead can buy the outfit through the minigame. If you don't know the outfit gives you 2.5% wood cutting experience boost and I will put the cost of the outfit up on the screen because that is too much text and my last brain cell can't handle that. 
Okay, then we have the cosmetic override for the same lumberjack outfit, which is the forestry outfit. Each piece of the outfit costs 1250 anima infused parks and 25 of every log in the game. And we have two more items to go. One of them is the clothes pouch, which is also kind of meant as a cosmetic override. Essentially, you can store your lumberjack or forestry outfit inside the clothes pouch, and now you get the benefits of the outfit, which is the 2.5% bonus food cutting experience, but you can also wear fashion skip everywhere you go. And the final reward is cosmetic override for your beaver pets called the funky shaped log. Fitting it to your beaver will now allow you to change the color of the pet depending on what you like. And that is it with the rewards. Keep in mind Jagex is planning to upgrade this minigame throughout the year, so events or rewards that might not enter right away will definitely come to the game later on, because this update is meant as an infinite boost to make your woodcutting experience so much better. This means Jagex will constantly keep an eye on forestry and update it whenever it's needed. For now though, I thank you so much for watching this guide. If you enjoy this content, consider subscribing and I'll see you all tomorrow with another video. Bye!